This is a typical multi-story frame and we're going to very quickly apply some wind loading onto this. This frame has parapet, has some inset stories, it even has a roof canopy and if we just swing around to the back of the structure we'll see we also have an entrance canopy down here. So very quickly we'll apply all our wind loading onto the frame. So going in, the first thing we need to do is to define our wind diagonal values. These influence size reduction factors on wind loaded members as per the British and Euro codes and this is particularly useful in defining the wind loading on globally loaded members such as wind bracing members. So we'll look at the size of the structure and very quickly we'll see that it's roughly about 20 by 20 meters. So if we choose a diagonal value of 25 and then just go for inclined members only and put this into a front view. I can very quickly just window all these members and the members are now all applied. If I now come along and the next thing I need to do is define my wind directions. And I will just choose the basic four wind directions, 0, 1, 90, 180, 19, 270. And we'll have internal pressure and suction. We'll turn on a wind analysis and we will choose to use the directional method. The angle to north, if we put the building into plan, I can set my north to be at 45 degrees to the vertical. So if I turn on my axis and put in a value here of minus 45, we shall see our north pointing up there in that direction. We'll have a basement depth which doesn't carry any wind of 1.5 metres. We will use the standard dynamic augmentation factor and we will use the UK's SD factors. Coming back to this menu, we actually come back to the same area because we want to now apply some wind loading cases. And I'm going to ask to have dead wind and dead plus life plus wind serviceability and then now I'm about to create an additional 64 loading cases. And if I now look at my combinations, I will see that I have all these different combinations for service and ultimate lo state loading cases. In this case, we're working to the British code or we could have used the Euro code. Next, I want to come along and choose my site location. We can work both to the UK GB site data or to the Irish site data. So here we were, would be able to choose somewhere like Galway in the south of Ireland. There we go. So now we're into Galway Bay, or I can put in a national grid reference. In this case, I'm going to move back to GB, and I'm going to pick somewhere like Aberdeen. And these are great for getting you close to where you want to, and then you can either yourself eye in where you want the building to be, or you can again put in your northing and eastings or your national grid reference. It automatically works out the obstructions, the sea, town, country to, and topography for your building and outputs everything. In this case we will work for a 1 in 50 year building. Um, it's got all the heights of the building all automatically input. So that's nearly all of it done. I'll just exit from the wind analysis and come back in and we'll see now we want to start and do our panel bracing and our wind panels. So panel bracing, back into 3D and I'm going to define my panel bracing and if I just turn on my inclined members again and they will be all these bracing members as I don't have any real roof bracing and that's them done which means they don't get used for defining panels and makes it more accurate. And now I want to generate our panels and again back out the full frame and all I do is I just say automatic we'll have horizontally spanning and I just say automatic and if I turn a bit of colour on here we'll see the individual panels for each wall 
recognizing all the wee um, returns and everything. And you can see that the canopies are a different color from the main roof because they are handled with loading on both sides. And again, your little canopy down here. And we have our parapet here. And the only thing I want to do is in this panel here. So if I go to search mode, choose this panel, I can tell it that it's open. And just to make sure I can in edit mode, take out that member. And now that is working properly. Now we have full access here to changing anything. So for example, if I decided that this roof panel is going to span vertically instead of horizontally, I would just in search mode find that and I would then just tell it that it's going to span vertically, spanning in a different direction and I just swing around I can see all my loading. So that's it done. If I just close out of here, just examine what I've got. I now look at my wind directions, so turn off all the extra values for a moment. Here's all our wind coming from the, nine, the zero degrees, and we get our pressures and our suctions, and naturally we get the pressure on the canopy. If we swing around, we'll see all our suctions on our uh, leeward panels. Wind coming at 90 degrees, and then 270, again pressure, and our suction. So this canopy member is carrying the pressure that's on the underside of the wall as well. So it's taking that value and it's all worked out. Now if we come in and look at the values, we can see our CP values that were taken on the, on the members. Uh, we can see our 1.3s on our leading edges, and we can see it tapering off to 0.9 on the trailing edges and then we can also ask for the physical Q values so we can see 1.1 on our leading edges and down to 0 0.6, 0 0.7 on our trailing edges and 1 on our external edge of our canopy and if we come back out we'll see this on all of them and we can also just confirm that we've got the right panel definition so we can see what it's chosen for the panels. So that is how quick and easy it is to apply the panel wind loading on a complicated structure.